That's why I hit you with one. It's called the <laughs> Shall I do it with that? With the... But oh, with one hand, like sort of ten to one. So hello guys and welcome to today's video. Today I'm joined by Harry and Benton to fellow third year medics here at Cambridge University. In this video we're going to talk through these guys' experiences, we're going to maybe give you guys a few tips, but also a few things to really look out for when you apply to Cambridge as an international student to give yourself the best possible chance of getting in. This video was kindly sponsored by whitecoachmentoring.com. They are a fantastic mock interview firm who specialise in panel, MMI and Oxford style interviews. They're based in Cambridge and Oxford and provide interviews across the globe. So if you want a good mock interview on demand that you can book and get within two hours, then go and check their website out. So with no further ado, let's not waste any more time. Harry and Benton, please introduce yourself to my lovely fans. Hi there, I'm Harry from Fitzwilliam College and this year I'm doing a research project in pathology. Hi, I'm Benton. I'm a third year medic from Robinson College. I'm doing a part two dissertation on physiology. Wow, so you're in the PDN department. PDN department. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, for part two, a really interesting thing is that Cambridge medics get to study any subject they want. Mm -hmm. Other students doing other subjects can't do that, but we're special. I'm doing engineering, Harry's doing pathology, and Benton is doing physiology here. So now we've met Harry and Benton. Could you maybe give us an interesting fact about yourself? Alright, for me, I'm actually two years older than all the people in my year because I'm from Singapore. Yeah. So I actually served two years of national service as a combat medic. Oh wow, so before you even got to university, yes. you spent two years serving for the army. Yes. That's pretty amazing. That doesn't really happen, I don't think, in Europe or in most countries around the world. And what about yourself, Benton? Um, for me, I'm a sprinter and, and I used to rank top five in Hong Kong, which is in my year group. Yeah, I don't think I'll be a good sprinter, I'm a bit too big for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, that's pretty interesting. Now we know these guys a bit better, um, let's quickly talk about what we're going to go through today. So coming up in this video, we're going to go into detail about your academic experience here at Cambridge, but also what life is like as an international student. And lastly, I think hopefully you guys will share as many of your tips about how other international students can put forward a very good application to Cambridge Medicine. Because you're clearly here, and I think a lot of my viewers, they want yeah. to be here too. Mm. Because it is a fantastic university. Mm -hmm. I think one of the best, well, it is, I'd say, it the is. best in the world. Yeah. Mm. Harvard, no, uh, <laughs> let's not say no to Harvard, because let's say one day we want to go there. <laughs> yeah, I think we're definitely one of the best medical schools in the world. So yeah, we're very privileged to be here. How is it like studying as an academic here? Is it quite intense? What are your experiences? Uh, yeah, please tell me more about it. For me, the Cambridge course has been a very intensive course okay. because it's hugely scientific. There will be a lot of learning and I've been working really hard for the past few years, mm. but it is a very enjoyable course. Roughly how many hours of work do you do a day? Is it like, does it, does it differ between days? Well, it depends on the year, especially for second year, it was among us, we know it's a very yeah. hard year. Yeah. So. I just many times after the lectures, I'll spend a few hours going through my notes, all the lecture stuff. But it's, I can still find time to do other things like sports and stuff. So okay. it's really balanced. We're really fortunate enough to study in Cambridge yeah. where there are a lot of, of, of the researchers. They will, they will teach you in lectures and stuff mm -hmm. because it's quite cool that it is the lecturers who are quoting their own their, their research. In that literally the was like yeah. found a year ago. Yeah, yeah, found a year ago. So I think it's a really enjoyable experience, like especially if you're into like all the science bit. Yeah. If you don't like biology and like the details as to why exactly things are like they are in biology, mm -hmm. then the Cambridge course might not be for you. When you come, you think it's going to be hard, mm -hmm. but then it's a few levels above that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about just sort of adapting yourself and learning yeah. how to learn. Yeah. Do you have any other nice things about the academic experience you've had? Um, I think for first year, I, I, I would enjoy it is the dissection process really much mm -hmm. because in Cambridge we do like it is whole body. So I think it's really important that we can learn as a whole body because mm -hmm. we will learn about how different systems they will work they work with each other, they cooperate with each other mm -hmm. and, and, and the relations with, with each other. So that was really, I think as, I definitely that's agree really as well. enjoyable, yeah. I don't think most universities do that, do they? No, it's very I much... think it's mostly in Cambridge, yeah. Mm. So here, you have the whole body for one year, mm. five people in your group, and you work together to mm. learn about different parts of the body. It's pretty amazing. Mm. What about yourself? Any other nice things you've noticed and you've experienced? Yes, I do agree with Benton that the practical part of the course, such in anatomy, dissection, that's the more interesting part. Mm. And this is, does, does not just apply in anatomy, mm -hmm. also in biochemistry and physiology. Mm -hmm. So 
there's many of these practicals involves lab work. Yeah. So we're very fortunate in the labs there are actually researchers to guide us and teach us. Mm -hmm. Not only do we learn laboratory techniques, we are also at the same time we get to explore research as a whole mm -hmm. and also apply whatever we learn from the lectures into you know apply it in practical situations. That's pretty cool. Every practical you have experts helping you both practically and theoretically, which is unique mm -hmm. to Cambridge. Yeah. Okay, fine. So could you maybe give me five or six good things, just summarizing about the course? Intensive. Mm -hmm. It's stimulating. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. Fair enough, yeah. So I think for me, it, it is a supervision system in Cambridge we, we use because uh, after, after, each, uh, after each lecture, after each week, you will have one supervision on each subject, mm -hmm. which I think is very good because like the supervisors, they will ask you really stimulating questions mm -hmm. about that topic. And, and on the other hand, if you have any questions, you, you can just ask the supervisors okay. yourself. Any doubts, you can any just doubts. get it cleared. Yeah, I think, I think what I found most useful is the supervision system. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Because I think our course, like, it is really comprehensive. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very really useful that we learn about a lot of the basic science, yeah. which in the future is very useful because if you have some, some problem that you don't know how to solve, mm. sometimes you have to go back to the first principle yeah. and you have to work your way out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really fortunate that um, Cambridge they have taught us to equip all this um, um, skills, this extra knowledge. Extra knowledge but yeah. I think one day it'll definitely be useful, yeah. especially when we're working with unseen situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's pretty good. Any things that you maybe didn't, maybe a few points about what you didn't like about the course? Well, the one thing that Cambridge course has is very well known for mm. is that it's very heavy emphasis on the, the scientific parts. Right. So if you're a student who wants to have a lot of patient contact ever since first year, I think Cambridge may not, or Oxbridge in general, it may not be the best course for you. I think okay. for, for, for first year, you will see like um, four, three, four hours of patients yeah. for first year. And in the whole year. In the whole year. And for second year, it's more like one hour of patients for, for the whole year. For PFP, it is mainly, it, it, it's the full name, it is preparing for, it's for patients. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically this course allows us to visit uh, it's from different perspective mm. in patients. So in first year we will go to um, you have GP practices, yeah. and second year we we'll go to um, different hospitals, yeah. and third year we have com community services. Yeah. Yeah. So which is quite useful, like seeing how the health service works. But even that was that was quite minimal. Wasn't yeah, it? it's really minimal. Like so, yeah. for each visit, it only lasts for one hour. So if you really like to sort of speak to people and meet patients. I don't think the Cambridge course yeah. would be for you. And it's not because, you know, don't think about it in terms of it's not, you're not good enough for Cambridge. Surely, you know, you might be good enough, but at the end of the day, you want to apply to a course that you will enjoy mm -hmm. because you do spend five slash six years studying it. And that's a long time. It's yeah. not a short, short yeah. time. Yeah, um, I think for the course, it's really stressful mm. because we have quite a lot of workload each yeah. week. So for first year, each week, averagely, we need to write three essays. Mm -hmm. And then those are on top on the self-studying time that we need. And for second year, it's even worse. That's the nature of the course, simply. Yeah. And that's, that's just a course. You can't really do much about it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I feel as if even though it is stressful, even though it is intensive, it's making us better doctors. Mm -hmm. It's making us, it's preparing us for the future, yeah. which mm -hmm. I think you know, is, the most, is the best part of this course. Yeah, yeah, Regardless yeah. of what the medical field will look like in 20 years, mm -hmm. I feel as of all Cambridge medics, mm -hmm. the way it's so intense, the way it's so rigorous, I think we should, we should be fine. Yeah, yeah. I think it's now, let's talk about the fun side of Cambridge. You know, mm -hmm. What is life actually like as an international student? What societies are there? Mm -hmm. What do you get up to in your spare time? Because in my experience, I think fitting in into Cambridge is quite easy mm. because first of all, like you have loads of friends and then some mm. of the friends, they are from, uh, they are from overseas mm. and some of them, they are local students, mm. local British students. But, but I find both type of friends, they are really friendly to me. Mm. So I think it's for me, for me myself, it's really easy to fit in mm. and make friends, yeah. Right. And Harry? Uh, yes, definitely, because we're all international students. Mm -hmm. We are coming into a new country with a different culture. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm quite happy to find that people here are very friendly and accepting. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, because Hong Kong and Singapore, they send a lot of international students to Cambridge. <laughs> so you won't have trouble finding friends from the same place, same area as you. Right. So there's definitely opportunities for you to interact with people from all different places. Are there any like good societies that you joined up to? 
international societies maybe? Because um, for me, I've joined a couple of like different of the cultural societies. Mm. So basically, you have different. You have Chinese societies. Mm. You have Korean societies. You have Indian societies. Yeah. So I think this is a great way to learn about like different different cultures yeah. and and learn like and learn people from different countries. I'm a part of the Singapore Malaysian Society. Oh, wow, that's big. It's a very large society. Mm. And yes, that's all it because it's a very cult- multicultural place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we do celebrate things like yeah. Chinese New Year mm. and also the religious festivals as well. So it's really nice for you because even though you're in a different country away from mm-hmm. home, you still yeah. have that small connection mm-hmm. through yeah. similar people from yeah. similar mm-hmm. places. Now may I ask you, in these societies, I, I kind of know the answer, but for, for our viewers, do you just meet people from the same year studying the same subject? No. 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 Why is that a good thing? Um, because first of all, like it is really stressful if you are talking just among like all the medical students. Yeah. Because mainly we talk about stress and work. Yeah. But if you talk to people from like doing law or even doing like other different nice. humanities yeah. subjects, yeah. yeah, it's really great because you can take your mind off your work and you can explore other subjects, yeah. knowing what's what's the hot topic in those subjects, and it will expand your knowledge. It's not just about people from the same subject. You get to, like what Benton say, you get to learn about the latest advancements in their subject matter. Mm. So it's not just talking about medicine all yeah. day long. Yeah. You also meet like PhD students and all, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is quite cool. Why yeah. is that? Would you say that's useful to you as medics, maybe? Um, I, I think it's quite useful because for PhD students, they're more mature. So mm. I think in some way, they give you it's a different point of view of looking certain type of things. Mm. So at the same time, talking to them, it will make you more mature yeah. in my own experience. And yeah. yeah, personally wise, I am still always considering about doing further studies after mm. these six years. So talking to PhD students, definitely, they can share some experiences whether of doing further studies is for me. Yeah. But definitely, in general, it's good that get to learn more experiences and learn things from other people as well. I think the sports societies are also, be it within the college or at university level, mm-hmm. it is a very good place for you to meet students from all the other colleges. Mm. So for example, like what I said earlier, rowing is a very good activity. Mm. You can just join your college rowing team and mm-hmm. you'll meet at all the freshers within your year. Yeah. Not within a year, I'd say within a few weeks because yeah. you get mixed around in the boats. Yeah, I think the nice thing about societies is it brings everyone together. Yeah. yeah. The collegiate system yeah. mm. and the multicultural yeah. aspect of Cambridge, it really allows us to meet people of similar interests mm. and helps us, I'd say, get more interested in mm. certain things. At the end of the day, that's going to make us better people. Mm. You know, employees are going to love us. <laughs> but also, we get to learn more. Yes, mm. definitely. And you know, we're here, I think, because we like to learn. Yeah. And the university just manages to create such a nice environment to learn. I think we should now maybe move on to a bit more of the technical details. Mm. So, application tips statistics, your personal experience of applying. For me, it was quite easy, you know, at school, my school said, right, submit your applications. I wrote a personal statement. My school wrote me a reference. I did the BMAT, came for interviews, bitch, bash, botch, and it was done. For you guys, I feel as if the, the road is a bit rougher, mm-hmm. but also the application might be a bit more competitive, I believe. Yeah. Tell us more. Because there are only 21 international places mm. um, each year in Cambridge, so I think it's more competitive. Right. You have to be a better, um, as a stronger applicant yeah. in order to get in, in my opinion. Because each year, like Cambridge, they will receive like hundreds of, of, of the applications overseas. Mm. So I think like you have to push up as a stronger application mm. overall. Yes, besides what Benton says about the competition and the score requirement, you have to make sure you're really strong. Mm-hmm. I think another thing that intimidates international applicants is also the amount of extra application, a lot of forms you have to fill in. For example, because some countries may not be taking the A-levels, mm. so they, there must be a way for Cambridge to know the whether the systems are similar, the amount of intensity, mm-hmm. so you have to we had to put in our, our results from all our schools mm-hmm. and to see whether it's being recognised by Cambridge at all. Right. Oh, so sometimes they might, they might not even consider it as a reasonable qualification. Yeah. Mm, and so yeah. even if you did very well, mm-hmm. 
then I just look over that because they can't compare each other to other candidates. Yes, mm-hmm. they, but they have a website on the Cambridge International Student page. Right. This shows the country, the select country you're from. Right. I'll link that in the, yeah. in the description down below yeah. because you guys mm-hmm. seem to think it's quite yeah. helpful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very helpful their part. And what are the exams did you do then? So you did the, we did the BMAT, everyone. Mm-hmm. Roughly, yeah. I think people know my score. What scores did you guys roughly get? Uh, for my BMAT, it's roughly around for my section one, I got around five. Mm-hmm. For my section two, I got nine. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. <laughs> I think nine's a top. Like, that's a top. What is top? Top score, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh yeah. For session three, I got around three or uh, three point five eight around the score. Yeah. And yourself? And for me, for my session one, I got six point four. Yeah. And for my session two, it's six point six. Right. And for my essay, it is two point five B. Okay, fine. Yeah. So maybe the essay you struggled a bit on. Yeah. But did you have to do the exam called the I- IELTS exam, I E L T S? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, the IELTS as well. And yeah. what sort of requirements did they did they ask for that? Um, because for the minimum requirement for IELTS it is 7.5 overall sure you get 7.5 overall but then for each paper you um I think you I think you need to get higher than seven right. for yes. each of the sessions yeah. so you yeah. have to do that as well and you did that very well yeah yeah so you, you just have to prove that if you're not from UK or EU you have to prove that you have a minimum standard of English not mm-hmm. just because you will be in the hospitals communicating with patients. Yes. So mm-hmm. patient safety especially, it's important. Yeah. You need a reasonable amount of ink. And how can people prepare for the IELTS exam? What sort of resources can they use? Is it, is it good to get a tutor? Is it good to read books, read storybooks, watch documentaries, listen to the radio? What could they do? Um, because for IELTS, because I think like um, it's, it's in bookshops, there are loads of uh, IELTS textbooks on sales. Mm-hmm. I think those are really useful yeah. because, because sometimes like you have practices and, and then at the same time they teach you new skills mm-hmm. on how to tackle the exam. Mm. So I think those textbooks is quite useful quite for useful. myself. Harry, any recommendations? Besides textbooks, in fact on YouTube, you'll find a lot of different channels. I'm yeah. not going to say all of them, yeah. but there are many of them that help you with the specific sections of IELTS, especially the speaking and writing part. Right. Because these two are the parts most difficult for international students. Okay. But there's definitely uh, ref- a lot of resources both in terms of textbooks mm-hmm. or online resources you know, to help you for the exam. You guys did the UK CAT as well, I'm guessing, for other medical schools. Um, yep. Cool. Uh, what medical schools did you apply to that required uh, that? Uh, one important thing, I mean, I think the, the audience may want to know because mm. for my the subjects I took back in Singapore yeah. is actually physics and chemistry right. because we can't take three sciences, sure. so I didn't take biology. And that really affected my university choices mm-hmm. because some universities like Imperial College, mm. University College London, a lot of London schools they require biology as, as well as chemistry. chemistry. Yeah. So in the end, my my choices were Cambridge, Manchester, Sheffield, Dundee, and a fifth choice which is not medical. Sure, and yourself? And for my UCAS choice, it is Cambridge, and second it is UCL, mm-hmm. third is Queen Mary, mm-hmm. fourth it is it is a Kiel. Okay, yeah. brilliant. So, do you visit these universities or do you kind of just look on the online perspectives, watch videos on these universities and get an idea that way? For me, it's probably just through the online perspectives mm-hmm. because you, visiting you can't expect me to fly yeah. over just yeah. to visit. <laughs> yeah. But yes, I think the, the resources the university provides on YouTube or just the online perspectives itself is very informative. Um, and for myself, because I've done my sixth form here, it's in, it's, it's in the UK, mm. so it's much more easier for me to visit like different universities. Right. So so for the four universities I've applied, yeah, I've, I've went to the open data and stuff. Yeah. It's really useful because you can talk to the students and, and then you can experience how it's like being in those universities. Yeah, because I guess until you yeah. speak to the students, it's really hard to tell what the actual atmosphere is at the university. Mm. And you need to kind of see if it fits for you or not. Yeah. Mm. I remember when I first, you know, ended up in, you know, visiting Cambridge when I was fourteen. I just liked it immediately. It's something about Cambridge, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's just hard to put your finger on. It's just beautiful. The buildings that surround you, yeah. just it's just just sort of it's very welcoming. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you visit this place, it's just like I want to be here. Just five words, you know, I want to be here. They just mm-hmm. stick in your head because once you visit and once you see the place. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, there's, nowhere, there's nowhere else in the world that looks like this. Even, you know, Harvard as well, it's beautiful. Oxford as well, it's beautiful. But nothing as beautiful as Cambridge, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. The way it's just yeah. so small and just everything's so well organised. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Fine. Academic wise, you guys made sure you worked very hard. You met all the deadlines for submitting documents and all. Paperwork was done. What, what other sort of things do you have to look after? Well, I think the most important part for an international student is your student visa. Right. And 
normally you can start applying for a student visa once Cambridge gives you the confirmation of your offers mm-hmm. because normally around August when the UK students have their results day mm-hmm. so from that period all the way until October when matriculation starts you have about two months to prepare the documents for your student visa mm-hmm. and there is quite a lot of things to prepare for mm-hmm. and this is normally stated in your offer letter that's given by the college for example for me I have to because it's for medicine especially mm-hmm. I have to show that I have to give a criminal clearance to show mm-hmm. I have no criminal records mm-hmm. I have to give a financial guarantee mm-hmm. because the tuition fees for international students is higher depending on the college especially or it's mostly around that amount oh so different colleges can choose to charge yeah. different amounts yeah right. because of the college fee I, I suppose yeah which is on top of the tuition, tuition fee yeah. okay so the tuition fee on its own is roughly 30,000 or something about 30 to 40,000. Then the 40, yeah. college fees add on top of that. It can be 8,000 to 10,000. Yes, depending that's on accommodation and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine, brilliant. And then, is it changing this year then? Oh, I've heard rumours that it might be going up or something. It may be going up, but of course it's best to check the web, the university websites okay, because fine. they post the latest. Yeah, so go fees. again, check the international website for the latest fees and figures because they do change year on year. About visas, lots of paperwork to do, you had two months to do it. Mm-hmm. Was it the same for you or was it slightly different coming from Hong Kong? Um, for me, it is basically similar mm-hmm. as what Harry had mentioned, yeah. Yeah, so was it kind of, were they quite supportive? Were the college quite supportive once you got the offer? Or were they, did they just give you the offer and let you sort it out yourself? Um, I think mainly like it, it is, um, these are called just, they, they will just give you the offer mm. and then as long as you make it, that's, that's fine. That's all they care about. That's, that's all they care about. So you really had to work hard to make yeah. sure everything was submitted, everything came, everything was good. Mm-hmm. And how long does this student visa last for? Is that for the whole course or is it for if you keep renewing it every year? At least for me, it's for the throughout, it's valid for six yeah. years, sure. the whole course. Okay. Yeah, for me the same. Six years as and well. Obviously with medicine, you can choose to, to work as a doctor afterwards. Mm-hmm. If you did want to stay in the UK and do the foundation years, mm-hmm. would you have to apply for an extension visa or is that another process you have to look after? Uh, according to what I remember, you, you have to do an extension or additional visa. Right. Well, of course, check the website to be sure. Yeah. Okay, now we've given a bit more information about um, the actual details of applying, mm-hmm. the application process. I think maybe we should compare what it's like to study medicine here compared to what it would be like back in Singapore or Hong Kong Mm -hmm. and why you're traveling across the world to study here. It's a frank question, but to be fair, it's a bit hard. Why are you traveling this far just to study here? Because basically for Cambridge, it is one of the best medical schools in the world. Mm -hmm. So so you will have the best education, you have the best uh, researchers to teach you, Mm -hmm. as, as I mentioned before. Yeah. Like you, you, you have you have the researchers in, in, in lectures. They will they will try to discuss their own research findings with you. Mm-hmm. So I think it, this is it's such a good opportunity for you to receive the best educations and hopefully be trained as the best doctor you can you you can be. Yeah. yeah. Harry. Well, for me, I feel well in general terms, the human body, the basic concepts are the same everywhere, but the school, the way it's been taught and the facilities allowing you to learn it can make a huge difference right. and Cambridge is one of the best in the world when it comes to research power mm-hmm. so for me, I, I've applied to Cambridge because I know it has a very strong research uh, it has a lot of facilities for research mm-hmm. so I can actually explore my interests and ask the, the, tu- the tutors themselves who are researchers in their field yeah, yeah. and learn more about what, what so the universities are saying yeah. because they're still producing good research, they're still mm-hmm. good medical schools, they make good doctors, but for your individual interests, yes. Yeah, yes. you find the Cambridge course very much suiting your requirements. Yes. yes, and they have the facilities to help you explore your interests, mm-hmm. that's very important. That's the important, okay yes. fine. So yeah, well, coming to Cambridge obviously then, if you have certain interests that you really want to follow, mm-hmm. then it's a good way to help you, I think, broaden those interests. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. And yeah. also, I feel as if Cambridge gives you all the opportunities you need, to actually consolidate your interests mm-hmm. into a career. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think other universities, they're still really great, but they may not give you as many opportunities simply because, um, I don't know, they might not have the connections, they might not just have the resources available to give those opportunities. So yeah, once again, we are super privileged to be here. Mm-hmm. So, so are there any other reasons that you chose to come to Cambridge instead of studying back home? 
because back in Hong Kong, I've learned, I've learned uh, there are a lot of good things about like it is Britain in general, mm -hmm. which which attracted me to come over to study here. Yeah. So so I think um, so once I'm here, um, I totally appreciate all those good stuff. Mm. So I'm really and I'm really enjoyable yeah. staying here. From the culture to From the, the culture people, to people to everything yeah. is great. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess even like Hong Kong, I'm sure it's great back there as well, but it's just different. It's just different. And yeah. life is about exploring, right? Mm -hmm. Life is about learning. So, yeah. Yeah. So, sounds like good. Mm -hmm. Harry, is all. I guess coming overseas from where, where you're normally comfortable with mm. is a very good way for you to be independent. Mm -hmm. It can be the small things like setting up your bank account, getting gift gift to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's the small things like this that you learn to do it yourself away from your support networks. So I think to study overseas itself is a new learning experience mm -hmm. for you to explore new things in Hong Kong. Okay, so I think we've given quite a bit of advice and hopefully the audience do find it useful. There's no point obviously just listening to all of this. Mm -hmm. The advice that both Harry and Benton have given, make sure you make notes, make sure you do your research and incorporate that advice into your application. Don't just let it in through one ear and out the other, make sure you make use of this advice because I don't think very often you actually get to international Cambridge medical students giving this sort of advice, do they? Thank you so much for coming and speaking. And thank you, you, know, thank you for thank letting you. us film in the Fitzwilliam <laughs> Medical Room today. Yeah, I'm glad this college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, maybe in the future we'll do some more videos about Fitzwilliam and Robinson. Yeah. Maybe you guys can give a tour. That mm -hmm. might be quite interesting because mm -hmm. I think students want to see the actual life you live. Yeah. They, they now they know you, they'll be like, I wonder what Benton, you know, where Benton walks and where Benton eats. <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll come across that later. Yep. Before we finish, I'd like to thank White Coach Mentoring for making this video possible. If you do want really good, high quality, on-demand mock interviews for actually a really good price, do go and check the website out. I think they do have a, like a, a refund policy where if you don't find the session useful, you get your money back. So it's definitely something to look into. Do go and check the website out. The link is in the description down below. I will put your Instagram links down in the description below. So please do go follow them and uh, see what they got, get up to every day. And also if you do feel like it or if you have any questions specific to these guys, please do send them a direct message or something. I'm sure you guys will be more than happy to help out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure. And you are medics at the end of the day, so we need to be helping. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you for watching. It was you know, lovely talking to you all. And it's a great privilege, once again, to be helping you out as much as we can. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.